Good day, viewers. I got a very special thing from eBay recently. It just arrived today in the mail. It is an ITX Home Broadcast Tube AM Transmitter Kit. Just the AM radio station. It's got two valves. You can tune it across the dial of your radio as well. Based on a 1940s design. Pretty much get everything I need. It's got two resistors, two everything there. It's pretty simple, it's got minimal components and it's got a GE1R5 tube. Yeah, there's a new old stock too. Nice. I didn't realise I had new old stock tubes, but I'll get to them later. I've got to read the instructions on how to build this now. Where do I start? That's a knob for the tuning capacitor, or the tuning gang. That's other components, resistors and things. That's the sockets, and that's the big tuning gang, heavy metal, and that's the circuit board that it all bolts onto. Nice, all right, I'm going to read these instructions and get building. It requires a 90 volt battery eliminator, and has a separate 1.5 volt filament winding. So these are 1.5 volt filament tubes, or heaters, not or regular 6 volt heaters. And that's the battery eliminator, the power of the unit. I'm gonna... Um, yeah. Alright, study these instructions. This will tell me how to build it all. Okay, if yours, I made this very easily. Very easy to understand. R1, go by your colour, you read your resistors. There you go. Up to uh, 5, which is 1M5, which is this one. Brown, green, green, and that's supposed to be gold. And that's it there. I did check them with a multimeter, but I think because of this bug buggered up lead, I'm not getting the right reading. So uh, 5, it's, it's, um, here we go. It's numbered there on the board, so it makes it very easy. The way I do this, I do all the small components, like this, this, all these little things first. Get them out of the way. Then work on the big, like the tube sockets and tuning gang. But I'll solder this on first so I can pick this up and handle it while I solder it. it. Makes it easier for me. This is an antique style tuning gang with a plastic cover on top, which is a good thing. It's got a little reduction drive here. So, yeah, if you want to buy one of these kits, start with it if you're a beginner like me. I've last time I built a kit when I was in year eight, so this is a bit of a I'm a bit rusty on doing this, so I'm going to start with the small components first, like this. I start off with resistors. From my experience, I'm a bit rusty with, I'm a bit rusty with resistors, so I do that, get some practice, study that, install them in the right places. In this case, R3 was not used on this model, so got them in. Then I'm going to in install all the resistors, make sure they're all fine. Then do work, move on the capacitors, and there's a little switch, those are the components. So yeah, let's continue building. Okay, viewers, this kind of stumped me for a second here. L1 and L2 are these two. Inductor number three is this resistor. It actually uses resistors as medium wave coils, the inductors, so yeah. That's another thing I've learnt today, so it's a pretty educational little kit. There you go, I didn't even know that. I thought that was mislabeled, but no, that was right. That was right. Okay, that's L1 and L2. So they go there. And that L3 goes over there. So that's another tip when installing resistors on something like this. I always face the tolerance bands the same direction on all the resistors. So on all these ones facing down, they all the tolerance bands face in one direction. Same with this side of the board. Tolerance band faces that way. So yeah. Might have stuffed that one there up. supposed to go the other way, but it doesn't matter. Electronic that'll work by, uh, uh, both ways is a non-polarized resistors. But yeah, to make it easier for you, you put the tolerance all in one direction. So yeah, let's put these little inductors in. Then we can move on to these capacitors. And I don't think it tells you Literally, it tells you which way the polarity is, but 
There's little suntan brands. There's little little ones. I know. They're not polarized too. Oh, point, I think point oh ones. I might use my actual yellow capacitors in the radio, but I don't know if suntan's a good brand or not. I'll give them a try. Not like suntan for electrolytics, that's for sure, but yeah, we'll find out. So let's install these and get it going. Okay, the we are working. We are listening to the FM via an AM radio. Awesome. It's sensitive on the um, volume, though. It wouldn't go too good in the volume. It just looks like hell. But it works. I was a bit worried at first. I plugged power up. I couldn't see the tubes lighting up, but apparently these tubes don't even glow. They don't work. So. Perfect. I wonder how much it will go, how far we'll go with this big antenna. Alright, viewers. Let's get this video going. This, one, this sort of sounds really nice. So. That sounds okay, but that's some, not, that radio does, does not have any tone or um, treble like a modern AM radio, so we'll shut that off and try this one. Alright, let's try another AM radio. Perfect. Alright, let's plug this one in. So you've got to be very careful how loud your input is. Radio on. Volume is flat out. I'll try an iPod. Tune it in. Concrete. Well, too loud. Now, let's plug my iPod in. I'll find a good song here for a second, viewers. Just hang on. Alright, viewers. Bass power, bro. Just a bass test song. We are working. I'll disconnect this. Yeah. 90 volts, you get the best performance out of this possible. So that's why I bought this separately. There you go. Very simple to build kit. I recommend anyone who's into vintage radios or ham radio buy one of these kits. They're very nice. They're a bit fussy how loud the input is, but that's no biggie. Instead of having coils to wind, you got the RF oscillator, one of the two, and the other one's a mixer, so yeah. So, thanks for watching.